Hi again, and welcome back to the Top Solid Modeling Tutorial. In step 11, we're going to learn how to trim the solid by a profile. We'll do this by creating a sketch on the new plane that we created in the previous step. We're also going to show you how to add fillets to the sketch, as well as go over how to apply symmetry within the constraints of that sketch. This should be a pretty exciting tutorial. Let's see what we can learn from it. Okay, now that you've created the plane from step 10, it's time to create the sketch in step 11. In this case, it looks like we need to make a profile to make a trimming on the model. Looks like we're putting some kind of slot through this thing. If we zoom down here, we can see, yep, there's the detail, so we have to make some kind of profile down here, and then we're going to use the trim by profile command to modify the model. Let's see how it all works. I'm going to start by selecting this plane, and then I'm going to right mouse button click and create a sketch on it. To begin with, to make my life simple, I'm going to view sketch from top, and I'll zoom up here so I'm just working locally. And now I'm going to lay out a sketch. Oops, it looks like I forgot I was in construction mode, so I'll undo that really quick. And now I'm going to lay out the sketch. From here I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to activate construction. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw it vertically right there. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to center this sketch about this axis. Now I also want to relate this axis to the origin point right here, or I shouldn't say origin point, but the start point here of our vector, right? So let's maybe start by going up here and adding that coincident relationship. So I'm going to start here by selecting that and selecting that point. Now this construction line will always be attached to that vector. Now maybe we'll stretch this out over here a little bit, why not? And from here, we can constrain the rest of our geometry. I'll go to the constraint command, I'm going to select right here, and then what I'm going to do is right mouse button click and choose centered dimension, select my axis, locate and set the size to an eighth inch. Now that was a whole lot of steps, right? That was very much a power user thing. So what I'm going to do is undo that, okay? And I'll show you another way to do it. So I'm going to do the same dimension again, but more slowly. I'll select here. I'm going to locate the dimension. Perfect. I'm going to type the value I want. There's the eighth inch. And now I've decided I want to center this dimension about the axis. So I can always right click on the dimension after the fact and choose define centering, select the axis doesn't matter how you get there. Again, another great example of how Top Solid is giving you multiple ways to get there. From here, let's go ahead and add a dimension from here to there. That should be 15 degrees. How about we add one from that axis to there? That should also be 15 degrees. Maybe you're too lazy to type it. Did you know that you could click on the drop-down menu right there and most of the previous values you typed in are given there? Or if you just want to borrow the value from another dimension, when well, this is highlighted, just click on that dimension and it'll borrow the value. They're not related to each other, it's just a little cheat to get a measurement. Next dimension I want is from this edge to here, and that is going to be a sixteenth of an inch. And then just to have this fully constrained, I'll go ahead and add another dimension there. How about a sixteenth of an inch also? And then we will add two fillets, and our profile will be done. One, two, perfect. Now, maybe you don't want this sticking up that high. So let's go here, make it 20 thousandths. It doesn't really matter, it's just showing you that you have the freedom to modify and manipulate as you want. After that, all we have to do is trim. So I'm going to right mouse button click. Notice in the contextual menu here is trim by profile. Just to show you where that is in the menu, if I go to the shape pull down menu, you'll have trim by profile. If I go to the icon bar, it's right here, trim by profile. Now, once you have trim by profile selected, you'll notice there's four different options in here. You have extruded, revolved, by imprint, and round a point. Round a point is for surfacing, specifically. This is the function we want, extruded. If we zoom up here, you can see that I'm getting a preview of what the software is already going to do. The important thing to know about our arrow, the arrow points to, to the side to delete in top solid. So if I wanted to keep What's inside this profile, I'd want the arrow pointing out. If I want to keep what's outside the profile, I want the arrow pointing in. Perfect. And now we validate. Now, you'll also notice that when you validate, 
it doesn't hide the tool shapes. We don't do that by default when we're trimming because we believe that in more cases than not, you may want to use this profile to do something more. So we leave it visible for you. But if you want to hide it, just double click on the feature. If you double click on the feature, it'll hide or show the driving elements of the feature. This last sketch, we don't even need to see anymore, so I'm just going to right click on it and choose hide there as well. Like that, you've now finished the Trim by Profile tutorial.